The Smithsonian Faculty Fellowship Program represents a rewarding academic professional development opportunity for faculty at Montgomery College. The fellowships are a product of a unique collaboration between Montgomery College and the Smithsonian Center for Learning and Digital Access. It's the first of its kind between the Smithsonian Institution and a community college. Dave Sowards is from Guinea, Virginia and spent most of his life in the D.C. metro area. After receiving an M.A. in history, he did research for several years on his thesis subject, Julian Shakespeare Carr, assisted by the Archie K. Davis Fellowship from the North Carolinian Society. Later, he joined the D.C. Teaching Fellows Program and taught for three years at H.D. Woodson High School. Dave has been teaching in the English Department for Montgomery College and UMUC for four years. He and his wife Rachel, a vice president at Palladino & Company, live happily in Durwood, Maryland. Hi everybody, I want to start by thanking you for, all, for uh, coming out during this national emergency. <laughs> I know times are tough, but do not despair, a new day is dawning. Uh, and I just, uh, I wrote this down because I started thinking about it. I, I remember a look in fellows' faces from last year, and I didn't know what it really, what it was, and I think it has a lot to do with remembering the students that you worked with from the semester before, because that's what I did as I was making my presentation. A lot of thoughts about that. So the following are quotes from a live write exercise in which the students had just 50 minutes to write an essay answering the prompt, what are three rights that you think are unalienable? This is my one-on-one students in, in all of their glory. Uh, not my one-on-two students that I had intended when I started the semester, and that is a story for another time. <coughs> uh, so many began with predictably dramatic introductions, such as, from the moment someone takes their first breath until their time on earth is done, they should be guaranteed equality, freedom, and the right to be the individual they want to be. As a U.S. citizen, it should not matter what, what ethnicity, gender, or religion that somebody is, everyone should be treated with respect and like everyone else. The aspect of freedom ties into the right to be equal and the right to be an individual because we are born as one, therefore we are allowed to think as one, to act as one, and to live as one. Clearly working with those rhetorical strategies. Uh, while others went for a hook, such as, although the United States dates back to, to a history filled with slavery and unethical teachings of inequality, it is highly unpleasant to see that in the 21st century we are moving away from the prosperity of equality, and instead, through the leadership of our current president-elect, thousands of Americans are becoming more outspoken in their racial and discriminatory views. But the first line, the best first line of any of the essays that I read goes to this. The world as we know it is not in the best state it could be in. Which I thought was an excellent way to begin an essay. Most of the essays begin with standard rights. Three rights that are essential or is a must have in a nation are the right to vote, the right to speech, and the right to protest. These rights allow us to seek change when there is a problem within a community. These rights allow us to find and select a solution that will fit best in the people's interest. These rights of voting, speech, and protest are a way citizens can voice out their problems in order to find a solution. These rights are the rights every citizen around the world deserves. Another said, these rights include the freedom of speech, the right to vote, and the right to fair trial. I believe these rights bring the most amount of freedom to citizens when it comes to shaping the government and telling government officials how they want this country to work. Or another, among the long list of rights, the right to travel the right to have freedom of expression, and the right to education are the most important rights that a country needs to provide its citizens. Many emphasized the freedom of speech. The right to free speech is one of the most important rights because it gives the citizen the right to speak out against the government. Unlike many countries, Americans, if they truly want to, can tweet that they hate the president with no fine or jail time. Another said, the freedom of speech allows every citizen in the United States to speak their mind freely without consequence from the law. For example, you can write a blog about how much you hate the president, and there won't be a warrant out for your arrest for treason. On the other hand, freedom of speech doesn't protect you from social laws. Just because you have the freedom of speech doesn't mean you can call your mother-in-law bad names and get away with it. You won't go to jail, but you will never hear the end of it. I was glad to see that voting made it into the mix since it was last year. 
The right to vote is another right that should be unalienable. Some countries don't allow their citizens to vote for government officials, and it can be detrimental to their society. Voting creates a sense of pride in the voter that they accomplished something and helped out their community by voting for the person they think is going to best help the nation. Some dug very deep into their studies. About 14% of black men in Florida have been disenfranchised and lost their rights to vote due to possession of drugs, usually marijuana. After doing time, I think it should be allowed that they be given their rights back for such a minimal offense. It really shows just how far we have come as a nation from the times when black people were brutally disenfranchised in the South with things such as the grandfather clause, poll tax, literacy tests, uh, and all to stop them from voting. This makes the right to vote important. Education was a common theme. The right to an education is important to accessing other rights. Without an education, citizens would not have the knowledge and intelligence to understand law, politics, and many other important concepts. Another one said that a nation should provide its citizens with the right to an education. Elementary education should be acceptable, accessible, and compulsory to all citizens in a nation. Education should be at no cost for the citizens of a nation and should be directed to the full development of the citizen's personality. Education should be accessible to all no matter your race, gender, nationality, or status. Education promotes the understanding and tolerance for humans. There were some surprises. Having a name is a basic human right. To have an identity which says who you are. It's something that distinguishes others from each other and just provides that human element. Humans are not items or property, but living things with unique identities. And some are not so surprising. Another right that should be allowed to citizens in all nations is the right to bear arms. The right to bear arms entitles the citizens to be able to carry or own a firearm. This right will help citizens to be able to defend themselves within this tragic world we live in today where anything can happen at any moment. And there were some timely ones. The last right every citizen should have is the right to citizenship. More than 43.7 million immigrants moved into the U.S. in 2016. I'm not speaking for historical facts, just reading the introduction. That is 13.5% thir of the total U.S. population. If all immigrants were granted a quick and easy citizenship application, they would not only boost the economy by getting jobs and contributing to Social Security taxes, but they would also help the job market grow. Some were too timely, in my opinion, and revealing of this, the world that our students live in today. The United States also treats people of Hispanic origin inferior to others. President Trump endorsed a bigoted and biased ad that portrays Hispanics coming into the United States as criminals. This type of stereotype endorsed by the president causes Hispanics to not be welcome and often targeted by law enforcement and other citizens. President Trump has also put a travel ban on the majority of Muslims in the country, causing a bigoted stereotype over Muslims to stand in the United States. The diversity of our nation is what makes it powerful, makes it a powerful one. But when stereotypes and bigotry prevail, people live in fear and become separated as a nation. I can't believe I wrote that. And, and there were some other profound ones, I should say. The 14th Amendment is one of the most important moments of American history. Not only because it overturned the ruling of Dred Scott, because it, but because it made every person born in the United States a citizen as well, guaranteeing them the equal protection of the law. This made, law, this made laws such as the Black Codes unconstitutional as well. Through the 14th Amendment, Victoria Woodall would argue that women have the right to vote. And although she was not successful, Susan B. Anthony was able to lead a small group of women to vote in New York on these grounds. This makes the 14th Amendment important. Remember, they only had 50 minutes. We have to do this time right thing for our one-on-one -on -one classes, and this was their prompt, and I was impressed. Uh, there were new rights that were introduced, thank goodness. Some were quite expensive. The freedom of opportunity is a vast one. Every single human being has the right to further improve themselves, be it their knowledge, physical ability, their way of life, or some other aspect of themselves. The tools required, as a result, must be readily available for them to take advantage of. Some were, of course, quite disturbing. Lastly, I believe that 
Being able to perform self-defense is another example of an unalienable law. Hypothetically, if someone comes up to you in the middle of the night and jumps you, your first instinct would be to fight back. Being able to have self-defense in this situation could save your life, even if it means destroying your attacker's life. That one had more details in it that came later. <laughs> but there is hope for the future. These three rights are not meant for a specific group of people, but for the human race, and that's why they should be implemented. Or knowledge is power. Freedom is power. Traveling is power. Without power, there is no government, and there is no democracy. Another one said, I believe that the first step for unity for the world is for us to start accepting each other for who we are and not what we are. I also think that if we see each other as human and not as LGBT person or as a convict, then the world will lead to the right path. And finally, without these rights, without these three rights, the country of the United States would not be how it is today. And I would say it would be worse off than how it is now. Many countries make the mistake of not letting citizens decide what they want their country to be like, and it kills any hope of having a fair system with happy people abiding by the laws. If a country wants to keep its people happy, it needs to adopt a, similar sim a system similar to the United States, if not better. If any unalienable rights should be considered by other nations, it should be these three. So I want to thank the Smithsonian Institution and the Paul Peck Humanities Institute for a great year. And I want to thank Mimi and Denise for an uplifting and enlightening experience.